Welcome to week three social marketing pre-recorded lectures. This week it's a discussion around segmentation and the importance of using our theoretical frameworks from commercial marketing to create our different forms of market segment and different segment approaches. Now the key here is that you want to be able to do two things. You want to be able to take an audience, take a target market, and then divide it into multiple potential markets, and then follow that up by taking that series of multiple potential markets and picking a priority market, a single priority, one market, and that's where you start. Most social marketing campaigns are not sufficiently resourced to open with a multi-pronged, multi-market attack. And also most social campaigns need to solve a specific problem for a specific audience. And that problem doesn't always translate to the next nearest audience. So if you're doing your social marketing correctly, which you want to be doing, one audience, one offer, and that's where you start. Now the second thing to consider is there's uh, always this uh, reading attached to the segmentation area. The Chapel paper talks about the challenges involved when you don't engage with your audience. And one of the key parts of this is that the audience that a social marketer is most likely to want to engage with is an audience that has a range of critics. There are people who are going to dislike your audience. You, as the social marketer, already want this audience to become different. You want them to change because you are running a social change campaign directed at them. There's something about them you would like to be different. But the second part that comes into this that's very important to consider is that many of these audiences have assumptions associated with them. So stereotypes and second guessing. These are elements that you have to reject in your segmentation strategy. Now the thing is, when you reject this, a stereotype, when you come forward with data from an audience who is disliked and bring that to the public, you will get backlash from sectors of the public, particularly anyone who's in the business of promoting those stereotypes for their own personal gain will not be pleased to have the stereotype challenged you will have to deal with those stakeholders. They are there and they are a problem that you get to solve or work around. But you need to ensure that when you are trying to create a social marketing solution, at the very least, it's not going to be built in a way that will exacerbate the problem you're trying to solve. So the other thing that happens always around week three is this is your time to outline what is your idea, what is your social cause or campaign you're going to use for the semester. There's always something on uh, Wattle for that. So register in so I know what you're working on and I can start tailoring and providing information, providing response. Now, in terms of segmentation and the theory, Straight up, here's why we do it. Undifferentiated marketing is ineffective. Blanket saturation marketing does not work anywhere near as effectively as targeted and focused. So we don't want a shotgun scattershot approach, we want a targeted approach. What segmentation does is it increases the effectiveness of the campaign because you now can identify the recipient of your offer that you're going to create. You can understand their needs, their wants. You can 
talk to them. You can beta test with them. And this increases the likelihood of effective change. But it's also more efficient to target audiences who are likely to respond, who in particular, audiences who need to respond. So we've got a priority audience. You can tailor to that audience if you use market segmentation as your principle for developing a solution to that particular audience's problem. This should be, as a commercial marketer, an upfront just default thing of, oh look, we've got a limited budget, we've got a limited target audience, we'll start with this audience, turn a profit, come back, and once we've you know, successfully dealt with and met the needs of this audience, we can use those resources to move on. In social marketing, you also look at this from the point of view of being able to draw on further resources and draw on further strategies. If you are starting a campaign and you don't know your audience, then this isn't a good start. But if you do know your audience and you can sequence a logical flow of audiences that you will go through, then you can show a longer term strategy, you can show it's worth investing, you can bring people in and say, look, you may not have resources now, but in three markets time, we could really use your skill set. There are ways to improve just simply because you have sat down and looked at an audience block and said, let's split this up into manageable project sizes. So the next step is that you are going to go from the market. You want to divide the existing market into smaller units. You want to give labels to those smaller units because they are going to become important. You also want to name them positively because eventually someone's going to see those labels. One of the worst things we did in social marketing was started creating labels for the laggard and late adopter communities like the chronic know-nothings. And the chronic know-nothing, upon discovering that they were deemed to be a chronic know-nothing, decided that we weren't worth listening to anyway since we've been rude about them. So label positively or label descriptively. Just don't create problematic labels because it doesn't help. In terms of the actual means for splitting up a segment, we're in the business of attitude change and behavior change. So we probably want to start looking at behaviors and attitudes as the first port of call. Now if we go focus purely on behavior segmentation here, this is a callback to consumer behavior theory. You want to be thinking, when segmentation by when would a product be used? When would the social product you plan on offering, when is that going to be in use? What benefit does somebody want? What's the likelihood of them using it? How frequently are they going, are they going to use this? Is this the hard core multiple times a day to the periodic occasional? Because the decisions that you make in terms of distribution access and pricing can be significantly influenced by the level of usage that your target audience is projected to have. And the level of usage that you desire from your target audience needs to be factored into your pricing. You also have models like the stages of change model, which can help you work out the readiness of your audience to change. Are they well and truly aware they know that there's a problem and now they are seeking a solution, they're going to want a different message and a different product than somebody who didn't know that there was a problem in the first place. And also, in the attitude stakes, is how do they feel about the product you're offering? What's their likely reaction? Now, all of this basically is for the purpose of creating multiple opportunities. You evaluate your target segments, 
you review and rate them over a series of criteria. You use, and you can have multiple ranking schemes. You can have multiple approaches. You can then work out what is the approach that you want to prioritize, which is the most important aspect. You want the largest or the smallest, because size just is that. It's a rank order of size, It's not, a, and then you decide what's most important, small, medium, or large. Can you reach that audience? How well can your campaign reach the audience? Is this a case of we've got a nearby audience that we can easily get to, that's receptive, we will target them first, as an extended trial, and then mass market this afterwards, bring it out to multiple uh, harder to reach groups in our second, third, and fourth phase. Similarly, on the receptiveness, there is a default tendency in social marketing to try to save the unsaved, whereas sometimes we want to preach to the almost converted. So the receptiveness, again, is a question of what is most important to your campaign in terms of effectiveness and efficiency? If you have a chronic problem that needs to be solved urgently, for example, a road safety campaign where everyone's changed signs of the road that they drive on and we've discovered we missed the campaign out, they may not be the most receptive, Although if they're driving headlong into traffic, they may be the most receptive. If there's a group who it's important that we reach them because this will solve a major problem, for example, an infection, an infectious disease spreading, stopping people from spreading that, even if they are not, because you know, I always come to work, no matter how, I never take a sick day. Stopping them stops this flowing out and becoming a bigger problem. They aren't going to be receptive, but they are a priority. On the other side, some of the times you do not want to go use a limited block of resources on a group of people who are going to resist you and fight back when there's another audience out there crying out for your help and your support. The last two elements are actually intertwined a bit. One is the political imperative. And this is, is this audience important to the government? to a fundraiser, to someone in the organization. What are the political implications of targeting this particular segment? Rank those in order of most important, least important. It's also a sort of stakeholder framework to be thinking about here, highest to lowest importance. Then, you have to pick one market. And every time, Someone goes and says, and. My target audience is 14 to 17 year olds, males looking to learn to drive, who are practicing driving on video games. And also I want 22 to 30 year old female drivers. Those two audiences don't match. There's nothing you can produce that will meet both of those audiences. So don't, and this is the, this is the really hard part, this is the part people struggle with. If you pick every market, you are failing everybody. You are not helping if you cannot effectively reach a single market. So if you target a market and if you are trying to change the world and save the world, you will find people going, but we can't ignore the needs of market X. It's like, if you attempt to address every market at once, you're not just ignoring the needs of market X, you're ignoring the needs of the whole alphabet of markets because you're failing everybody. Pick a single, clearly defined, responsive market. Then what you want to do is use all of that information for the market segmentation to make sense of what you're about to do next. So what follows up from this is that you go and 
basically go from segmentation into understanding the audience and the value. And this is why segmentation is critical, is if you have multiple segments, you can't answer these questions. So per segment, you need to be able to answer what does the customer need to know to use the product? What do they feel about the product? What are the positives? What are the negatives? Is there a clash against any of their worldviews or ideals? How does that get resolved per audience? Are there clashes between audiences? Then we ask about behavior per audience. An audience who's never engaged with your product will have a non-recurring startup initial behavior. An audience who is a regular user of your product will have a different set of behaviors. Does the value offer require this audience to use it frequently or infrequently? What are, and consider this for anyone doing a medical style intervention in social marketing, do you need a single consult your doctor or do you need a routine, see your doctor every three months? Because those are two different behaviors. That's not th four separate single behaviors, that's four recurring behaviors. Then we're also looking at the question of what do we need to do to engage the value to, and get the product. These are just some base starting thinking about elements because you're going to come down to the product offer a lot later. But also you're asking the question here of, and we mentioned here the computer a fair bit, what's the ideas? What's does something sit on the phone? Does it need an application? If so, will your target audience have the right type of phone? Something as basic as, I want to have a fitness application that reminds my user to train physical activity every 72 hours. And my tar primary target audience are people who use Android phones, so I'll release an iPhone app. That's why you've got to understand your audiences. All right, the barriers. These also become really important. What does somebody think is going to cost them to use the product, to engage with the behavior, to adopt the idea? Because you also have this in terms of why are they not doing the behavior now? If this is such a self-explanatory, straightforward, self-evident good, they will be asking the question, well, why haven't we done this in the past? If they were doing this in the past and they gave up, why did they quit? What do they see as costs? Per audience, per market, this will be different. So these are factors that you also, when you're looking at these things, like the benefits and the barriers, you can also see these as points of differentiation and points of segmentation. You can segment an entire market based on the benefits they think they will get out of performing the behavior. Similarly, segmentation can work across solving and resolving elements for targeting positioning because now we're coming up against competition. And this is the question of what are they doing that is in competition to the behavior we want? It's knowing these answers, being able to drill down this uh, information to be able to understand why do they do the behavior that we want them to change? What do they get from it? What's the price on it? How much can we charge in social and commercial price? And then what's the product benefit set we're giving back? Because if we don't win on this market, 
We have win on this head to head. Well, um, we can't beat that behavior they're currently doing. So it's also vital for us to understand those key ideas of what is the behavior. And we can even do, again, segmentation by competition. Who is the most likely rival? What's the benefit that we are trying to beat? One of the last facets to consider, again, for the market segments is what's the context? Who is the influential other over this audience? Every audience is influenced by somebody else. There are always stakeholders. There are always influential others. If you don't have a narrowly defined audience, you won't be able to work out who these key influences are. For example, if we were to target AM radio listeners, the people who ring up the Alan Jones talkback show, unless we've got Alan Jones on sign, unless we've got an AM radio shock jock on our sign, on our campaign, we are not going to get that audience, no matter what else we offer that audience. They need to hear from their influential other to be given permissions and approvals to go ahead and adopt something themselves. Lastly, so bringing you back around to get you to think about the selection criteria for the evaluation, we looked at a wide range of ways in which you can slice and dice a market. What you then want to do, you want to run through, you don't want to just make one snap choice, you want to run through a bunch of different options. You then want to do the, set the criteria, set the ranking, and you can look at things like, how big is this audience? How many different segments can we slice this audience into? Is an effective audience of one, who's a key influencer of, of others, big enough market for you? How frequent, you know, and how severe is the problem in that audience's life? Uh, one of your worst case scenarios is low incident, high severity, because it's not important until it's important, then it's really important. Does the audience have the capacity to punch back? Are you basically up against an audience who can resist? Or does the audience lack the ability to resist? Can you get to that audience? Can you reach them? Do you have access? Do you have the channels, the distribution, the advertising? What does this do in terms of looking at the audience in terms of will they respond? Are we looking at people who are positively predisposed, negatively predisposed? What do we need to do to create responsiveness? And also for a ranking here, how much work is going to be required to get this audience to come on board? And the last sets are actually in-house. To address this particular audience, what's it going to cost us? I mean, it might be a great audience to get, but it'd be very expensive for low return. Or it might be an audience that's just out of reach because we just don't have the, the incremental budget required to address them. Same goes for responsiveness to marketing mix. Does this, in ranking the order, and ranking the criteria, what is the likely responsiveness? What, how well are they going to take to different messages, different product offers, distribution channels, and pricing? And finally, in the evaluation criteria, can we actually solve the problem for that audience? Does our organization have that capacity? So, this brings you back to the segmentation mantra. You need your segment to be precise. When you Tell me about a segment. I need to be able to understand that segment. If you say, ah, uh, people, it gives me nothing. Be precise. Be concise in the depth, in the audience. A smaller, more refined, more defined audience is more effective. It has to be accessible. You need to get, you need to be able to get to and engage that audience. That audience needs to be able to engage your 
offering and responsive. All of this comes down to the same thing. You are doing segmentation to find an audience who will react positively to your campaign. If they're not going to respond and they're non-responsive, then I will question why you would not choose a responsive audience over a non-responsive audience. So, as always, if uh, any questions out of the, the slide deck and the content, either off the Twitter or the Instagram, on the email, or come see me in the face-to-face. -face.